Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for two of my die sets, number 1005, the tree pop-up, and number 1006, the nature edges. And you can check out all of my designs at karenberniston.com. The tree works great as a flat tree, or you can use the included pop-up die to make it into a fun pop-up. And it works so great with the nature edges, which includes edges for grass, hills, and clouds. I've placed the dies on magnet sheets so you can see everything in the set. There's seven in the tree set and three in the nature edges. These are wafer thin designs, universally compatible with most of your major die cutting machines, and I'm going to use a Sizzix Big Shot today. Combining these two pieces is a very quick and easy way to make a leafy tree. Now I can use just the tree alone, for instance, if I want to do winter or bear trees. But when I want to have nice leaves all over the tree, I use the leaf piece here. And what's nice about this is it gives the look of individual leaves, but it is in a single piece. So that's going to make it very quick for die cutting and assembly. I'm going to use my favorite, which is my fine line 20 gauge bottle filled with Lineco Neutral pH adhesive. And I'm going to add that glue all over the back of the branches. And then that tree will line up with that foliage piece where the branches kind of go up the middle of the outside leaves. So it's pretty easy to get good placement on this. Just look at the outside of your branches, get those kind of lined up in the centers of the leaves. And just like that, I've made that beautiful leafy tree. If you'd like to style it as a spring or flowering tree, there is a die in the set that will cut six little small flowers at one time. So that makes it pretty quick and easy to add a lot of blossoms to the tree. My favorite is to add something in the center of those blossoms. I'm going to use some small rhinestones today. The die set also includes two swing options. So there is a flat swing, like a board swing, and then there's also a tire swing. So I can cut those two out of their respective cardstocks. And one feature of the flat swing, if you just cut it, it's just a flat swing. But if you'd like to have that wood grain texture on the top, you're going to put the paper back in the die again and run it through your machine using an embossing sandwich. Now you're going to need to check for your particular machine, maybe on YouTube, find out what is the proper sandwich to emboss a wafer thin die. And then once you've made that sandwich, then you can run that die back through the machine using that squishy silicone, and that will push that paper up through those holes in the die and give it that wood grain texture. So here's how I hang the swing. I start with a piece of four ply baker's twine, but I split it into two pieces of two ply baker's twine. It just makes it easier to get two ply through the holes. So I use those two pieces through the holes on either side of the swing. So basically that swing is now hanging from two pieces of twine. And then I choose usually the left side of the tree because it's a little bit wider branch for this swing. And just go in there with the twine and tie it around that branch. And just like that, I can hang that swing. And of course you can experiment with the height of it. I like to cut off the excess twine and maybe push the knots to the back of the tree. You could also swing the knots all the way down to where they're underneath the swing. So just experiment with it. But really easy to hang a swing from the tree and it just adds that little quaint touch. I can choose any size card. For today's card, I'm gonna make an A2 top fold. So that means I need to start with a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of cardstock scored in the middle for folding. I can also choose the size of my inner card, the one that's gonna hold the pop-up. As long as it's big enough to hold the pop-up die, it doesn't have to be any taller than that. So what I've done is cut a small green card that I will use for both the pop-up and two of my nature edges. The pop-up die includes alignment nubs on the side that make it really easy to line it up over the fold of any size card and anywhere along the fold. So if I'd wanted that tree off center, I could have just moved the pop-up die. And I'm also going to tape in place my grass edge and my hill edge on both sides of that little card, cutting all three at the same time. So with just one pass through my machine, I've managed to cut grass along the top. I've got my pop-up in the middle, and then along the bottom, I've cut that hill. Now a nice feature of the hill die is that the stitches are on both sides of the die. So that way, whether you're using the positive or the negative edge, you've got that stitch line detail. This is just a simple box pop-up. Fold the card in half and locate where the pop-up is. And then what you wanna do is you wanna give that fold at the base of the pop-up a little pinch in the closed position. Return everything up to where it started. 
then you open the card and from the back of the piece you just invert the fold so that the little box pops into the piece. That is it. Super simple. So now I'm going to attach that pop-up card inside my backing card. I'm going to use a tape runner on the flat parts of one side, but I decided not to go all the way down to where the hill is. That way I can tuck some things behind those hills later and then glue them down at the end. Just want to make sure that the fold is perfectly in the fold of my backing card and give that a good press. And then I just repeat for the other side. And once again, I'm going to leave my adhesive away from the grass edges so I can tuck some items up underneath the grass. Super easy and generic. That pop-up could be used for other items, not just the tree. And you can cut more than one along a fold, so you could make an entire scene. So the stitched hill can be combined in lots of different ways at different angles. You can think about making paths with that, or maybe you could make banks of snow or even sand. So it's going to look good in any of your nature materials. And once I've got all my hills put together, I'm going to glue those onto my card and finish out with a little line of grass along the bottom. The cloud's edge has the same double stitched feature. So you can see here I'm using the negative edge of the cloud, but I still have that stitching above it. And I can then do the same thing, combine various positive and negative cuts of the clouds to be able to fill in the sky. Then when I'm ready to add the tree, I just add the adhesive to the front of the pop-up platform and press the tree trunk to it. So just that little pop-up makes such a difference in the dimension of this card, plus it allows the swing to just hang freely next to the tree. To finish out my card's interior, I used Thinking of You from Word Set 1, and I placed that on a Catherine label to have a little contrast against the grass. And then I used pieces of the tree to make branches in the background. Now if you don't want to think up a whole different type of front of the card, just repeat the same type of elements. So I combined the grass, hills, and clouds for a background, and then made another tree, this time using the tire swing. And then for attaching this to my card, I decided I was going to put just half the tree onto the card on the left side where the tire swing is. Then I turned the piece over and used my craft knife to carefully cut away the other half of the tree and then I can use that on the right side of the card. Word Set 1 and the Catherine label provided the pieces again for another little greeting on the front of the card. It says hello, and then I'm just going to attach that now to the front of my card. Okay, now my card could be done, but I want to look at balance, and what I mean by that is when I open it, have I made the front of the card so top-heavy that it's not going to want to stand open, and yes, I have. So for that, I'm just going to add a panel of cardstock to the back of the card to balance the weight. Okay, another little troubleshooting tip. If you've created absolutely no tension in your fold by lining it up beautifully as I did, so in other words, the fold in a fold isn't keeping your card open at 90 degrees, and it's trying to fold beyond 90 degrees, you can add tension to the fold by just adding another little card in there. So in this case I'm just going to take my scraps of green cardstock and create a smaller little version of a card that I can glue into the fold to basically trap it at 90 degrees so that it doesn't want to keep flopping open further. And I just did that in two pieces, one on either side of the tree. And it really makes a pretty big difference because by adding that extra little bit of tension in the fold, it will now stand perfectly on the table at 90 degrees and you do not have to prop that card up against anything. My finished card mails in an A2 envelope because it's just a standard size card. And you know, I really see this design as being useful for all sorts of occasions. So I've done thinking of you, but think of this for maybe Mother's Day, birthday, thank you, congratulations, sympathy. I mean, there isn't a theme to a nature card. It can be used for anything. And you can swap out the styling on the tree for any season. Now there is this die that comes in the set that does six individual leaves for those times when you've got a little extra time or you want to do a fall tree. You might decorate the tree with individual leaves or you might mix the leaf foliage piece behind the tree and then maybe a few accent leaves in front of the tree. And the size of the woodland animals at just an inch and a half tall make them a great accent with the tree as well. Here's the little squirrel used on the front of this card. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all of my other social media accounts. 
You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.